What is going on guys, this is your boy Astrum Sensei and welcome back to this action RPG creation in Unreal Engine 4. So in today's video we're actually finally gonna be working on hit detection and adding animations for when we attack the enemy and when the enemy attacks us. So yeah, let's get started by downloading the hit reaction animation from mixamo.com and I've chosen this one standing react small from headshot on Maria there's also another one which is standing react small from front and I'm gonna go with the first one because it's much smaller and you know more believable although it's to the head but I don't care since I'm gonna replace them all later so yeah I'm gonna go with this one without skin and I'm gonna download by the way, before we get started, I wanted to special thank my super precious patrons who have been supporting this series and helping me make more content like it. So yeah, if you guys wanna support this series or just get the project files, make sure to check out my Patreon. It's gonna be a great help if you decide to support me, so yeah. So I'm gonna download, uh, open the combat folder in the animations in the content browser and just import this to the skeleton that we've chosen, which is Maria, and just import. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that I'm not gonna be using the zombie that I've imported earlier as our enemy. I'm actually gonna replace him with Maria again because she has a sword and you know all of that stuff and we can just use the same animations and everything until we have our own characters. And yeah, I just replaced them before recording this episode but if you wanna know how to replace them uh, you can refer back to the making the enemy character playable episode of this series. I showed you how to do it in that episode, so yeah, make sure to check it out again if you want to replace him with the child blueprint actor. Now, before we get started working on the hit detection that we've, we're gonna be working on in this episode, there's one issue that I want to address, and that is when you put back the sword. Uh, the animations don't go back to the normal running animation uh, the, yeah the normal walking and running animations instead it plays the combat blend space so we're just gonna take a look and see what's wrong with it I'm gonna go to the BP base okay so I found out what the issue was and that was that I've added the combat blend space before the branch actually what we want to do is we want to add both one after true and one after false and the one after true will be enabled and the one after false will be ticked off and the target is the NMBP for both and yeah that way when you play it you will see that it actually works so when you put back the sword it goes back to the normal running animation and yeah that's about it so yeah, right now we can start working on our actual hit detection, so yeah, we're gonna go do that, just that in the combat graph. Now where do we start? We're gonna start here, under the lock-on, we're gonna get a reference to, like just select the sword of nobles, which is whatever you called your sword by the way, I just called it like that out of the blue and you want to add event for sword of nobles collision on component begin overlap yeah we're gonna work on that later on so now that we've imported everything what we want to do is we want to create a new function in our blueprint interface character actions so we go there and add a new function i'm gonna call it check hit and yeah that's about it i'm just gonna put it in the combat category and compile we're gonna create a new function called um on hit so we created two of those check hit and on hit and compile and just close it now what we need to do is we need to go to our attack animations and add the add a 
notifier to each of them so i'm gonna go to the combat folder and add for each of one of the montages a new notifier which is called check it oh my god shut up <laughs> the voice <laughs> okay let me turn down the voice here you go okay so yeah we're gonna create a new track for the notifiers and when you want it to check the hit so basically at the peak of the attack what you want to do is you want to right click yeah maybe over here add notifier new notifier and we're also gonna call it check hit And quickly, we're gonna do the rest. So, over here, where is it? Yeah, it's at this exact location. So, you can edit this whenever you want. Now, the third one. It's at this moment. Oh my god, we actually don't have a... I haven't prepared anything for the kick, but I guess we can make it work. Now the light attack one. Yeah, about over here. Light attack two. Over here. And light attack three. Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna save and I'm going to go to our animation blueprint which is in the blueprints folder in my case and in the event graph no actually in the notifiers graph what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in check hit which is the notifier we created earlier yeah event notify check hit and we also want to add the yeah let's get the character and also get something called check hit which is the message of the event and that's about it for here i'm just gonna comment i'm gonna call it check hit notifiers And next we're gonna go to the BP base. Now there's something, oh what's wrong? Yeah, I'm gonna type in event check hit. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the nearest enemy and we're gonna get our sword. And yeah, we're gonna go inside the sword thing, inside the asset, and add something called a socket. I'm also gonna go call it check hit socket. And I'm gonna place it at the near the top of my sword. Yeah, over here is good. Like this. And basically what we want to do is we want to get the socket location and we're gonna copy the socket name I'm actually gonna delete the spaces just to avoid confusion and copy the name and paste it here we also want to get the nearest enemy location
Now what we're gonna do is uh, before we start connecting the dots we want to check if the nearest enemy is valid and then we're gonna play the attack animation if they are near uh, we're also gonna calculate some stuff so after the event check hit what we want to do is type in is valid and the input object will be the nearest enemy which is gonna be placed over here and this one's gonna be over here like this yeah okay And if it is not valid, we want to get the nearest enemy. And then we check if it is valid again. So this one begins. If it's not valid, it just loops because location and the enemy nearest enemy location and we're gonna get vector length oh without get just type in vector length and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create a new variable and we're gonna call the variable hit range and we want to make it green a float a green green float and what we're gonna do now is we're going to check for the branch we want to check if it's smaller than float smaller than float the vector length of these two yeah smaller <laughs> I always get those confused and yeah what we're going to do is if it is true we're going to play sound at location and I'm not gonna put a sound asset right now or maybe I will what do we have yeah we're, we, you, you want to add a sound for whenever the enemy is slashed by the sword so I'm not sure do I have anything cool here yeah maybe we can just put anything to make sure that it works yeah what about this one knife sharpener i think it's good and after you play the sound at the location what you're gonna do is you're going to get the event that we made earlier the other one so what did we call it i think on hit without event yeah here it is on hit and no that's that's not it so the one we made earlier from the sword which is I think it was called the at components begin overlap uh, you want to get the on hit event from here so I'm just gonna type on hit interface call no not this one on hit message yeah this one and I'm just oh sorry okay I'm just gonna copy it and paste it here instead of this one and delete this one like this the actor will be the self and the target will be the nearest enemy which is this one 
I'm gonna add in a reroute node. Mm, I don't know. We can just use it, bring a new one, doesn't matter. Like this. And yeah, I know I messed up this part, but I think we should be good to go. So we're gonna type in here on hit and use the event on hit. And when it happens, you just play the anim montage, which is the damage montage. What was it called? I think it was called react. Wait, oh, okay. Okay. So I actually unimported it and right now I'm gonna re-import it. I know. I don't remember saving. No, it's here. Okay, I forgot to make it a montage. So we'll just create an montage. That now it's gonna work. Yeah, here, here it is. So yeah, after you get, after you hit the enemy, the montage plays, which is the react montage, and the turn to actor um, thing that we made before this macro, we're gonna use it again over here so when you attack the enemy even if, if its back is turned on you they turn to look at you when you attack them also don't forget to delete this one because it can really cause issues we only used it to get the event thing and you want to select your sword and go to the collision part and choose custom because this way the character is actually gonna push the entire other character so i want to choose the object collision enabled to be yeah the collision presets to be custom the object type to be world static and everything in the overlap and the last thing you need to do is go to that hit range variable and change it to 250 uh, I actually got very stuck while I was recording this and that's why this part was recorded the audio separately because I forgot to change the variable I know I'm very stupid but that's what happened and it ruined everything and I thought the blueprints weren't working but yeah they were I just was very stupid and forgot to change the variable so yeah when we hit play and we go wait let me turn down my computer because we don't want to hear it twice. As you can see, it works now. We finally have a fully functional game. Yeah, right now it resembles a game more than before. And yeah, the enemy doesn't fight back, but we'll do something about that later. But yeah, that's the, the important thing is that it's working now and it's frozen. Okay. And yeah, the turn to player works because when you attack it, it turns towards you and she walks. So yeah, guys, that was it for this video. I know these errors are from the enemy behavior tree. Uh, I'll get to fix them later. So before the ending the video and leaving you off, I thought I'd explain the blueprints because I actually forgot and I noticed that I didn't explain everything while editing. So we're gonna over go over through the whole thing quickly again. So uh, we added the interface to the interface. We added the on hit and the check hit and we added the, we added a notifier onto the animations which is called check, check hit and we connected it to this event in the notifiers graph in the animation blueprint and over here in our blueprint base we got the socket location and the of the sword which which we created like we created a socket on the sword and we got the location of the nearest enemy and we got the vector length and the hit range is based on that now the hit range you can change it however you want uh, it's all it, it all depends on how big your sword is <coughs> and then you add the on hit which is what this one is so you add the event on hit which is the anim montage playing and after it plays the 
enemy turns to you maybe we should add a little delay here yeah let's do it delay 0.5 that way the enemy takes longer to uh, turn to us after being hit oh one more thing i forgot is to organize this part so for all of this i'm gonna collapse them into a node which is gonna be called check hit what's wrong check hit um yeah like this and i'm gonna collapse these into a node i'm gonna call them on hit and then we're gonna place them next to each other and comment on them hit detection And yeah, that should be about it. But yeah, I'll see you on the next video. Make sure to subscribe and hit the like button and the notification bell. And super special thanks to my precious patrons. If you want the project files, make sure to check out my Patreon page. And I'll see you on the next video. Take care and bye.